all three of those guys we mentioned, though, Fuaga, Faltano, and J.C. Latham, very unlikely to be there for the 49ers at pick 31, right? So let's be honest with ourselves. If the Niners yeah. don't go up and get a guy, this is where the conversation gets very difficult. And I think this is where we all will have three more different answers. The Niners are taking an offensive lineman at 31, guys. John, we'll go back to you. What's your prediction? Who is it? Who is the guy for the 49ers specifically at 31? We'll talk about some later guys. So you can't hedge and say, oh, we got to trade back into the second round. Then five picks later, I like this guy. 31, you're sticking and picking. Which offensive lineman fits for you there, John? If I am putting on my Kyle Shanahan hat, which I, I don't know if I'm smart enough to do that, I think Graham Barton <laughs> makes the most sense at that 31 spot as far as like, where they fit big board wise. I have a second round grade on them, but like if I'm looking at my big board, like I've got them picked 26 overall. So the values there that the neighborhood is correct and he kind of fits everything. You know, he played center a few years ago, so that's there. And I would draft him as a center. That's what I would want him to play. Now, I feel like Chris Forster probably wants him to learn guard. That's been the, the, what he does first with these guys that are moving. And so Feliciato, I feel like, is ironed in as a starter. You compete with Aaron Banks. Aaron Banks should be the guy, but Aaron Banks pre-entry and post-entry, that's two different players. If he bounces back, cool. You shift him into center. One does not simply beat Jake Brindle. Uh, <laughs> sadly, I have to say that. Uh, Cassius Marsh reference. Cassius Marsh, yeah. There we we brought that up on Locked On 49ers. <laughs> it was like... You sure about that? It's the, you know, the, I think you should leave me. You sure about that? And so that's, that's where I'm at with, with these offensive linemen with the 49ers this year. It's like, okay, they're going to say something like that in the draft, especially if they don't take one uh, in round one. But the, these guys can be beat out. I do think it's center though, too. You're right. They would have to start somewhere else. And they've only been veteran centers in the entire Kyle Shanahan reign because yeah. they're making the calls. So, even if they do draft a center, I wouldn't expect that guy to start week one necessarily. No. And, you know, real quick, just on Grant Barton, he's about as smart as they get. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he's been academic all ACC, not once, not twice, but three times. He's got center experience. He can do those things. And probably one of the most athletic interior offensive linemen, which is where I grade him, um, to come out of the draft in almost a decade. Like, the guy has it. Now, my yeah. biggest flaw with this tape was I liked his first and second quarter way more than his third and fourth quarter every game I did. And so that's something that is interesting to me with, you know, these lighter athletic guys. Like, I don't know, first quarter tape, way better than fourth quarter tape consistently. So that's something that I think I would want to figure out the strength and condition I think could help that out. But he's a damn good player and, you know, five starts at center uh, whenever he was a freshman. So he's got it. I, I Brian Bulaga with versatility is kind of my, how I try to pigeonhole him, if that makes sense. Well, he's but, a uh, maniac, John. That's why he can't hang on in the fourth quarter. He's on the ground every play because either he's going to pancake you or he's going to get pancaked. He's like tripping over guys, falling over. Himself. It makes he's sense, everywhere. man. He's doing up downs the whole he's, damn game. Yeah, he's a maniac. He's got to kind of chill out a little bit. And there's a, like a lack of power element. Like I think he's more of a day two physical athlete, but he's such an ass kicker and the film is so fun. He might sneak into, sneak into round one, but he's one of the guys where I would, I would rather take him in round two and hope that he plays up rather than expecting something, expecting a tackle, expecting something. Because if you start talking about a guard or a center, you got to be a pretty special guy to be selected in round one. And everyone loves the tape because he's fun to watch. But that's where I would pause, and that's where I 100% agree with you. And I love hearing you say that you think he's a center. And real quick, just on that, that point, I have 24 first-round grades in this draft so far. Like, I've got 24. You're picking 31. You're getting a second-round player. It's a first-round pick. Yeah. You get a second round guy unless somebody falls, but I, I I don't know. Do you do you have second round grade on him? Like, is that about where you see him too, Brad? Or do you think like this is a top twenty player in your opinion, in Grand Park? I wouldn't say he's top twenty. I think because you're having, I agree with your assessment. I think he's going to be a center, and we've already seen that at his pro day. They're already kicking him down into center and wanting to see those drills. Just because, although we talk about size with Troy, I feel like you can see the size difference with Graham. And although Graham has phenomenal technique, even as a left tackle, when you are dealing with those longer, bigger power defensive ends, that can become an issue. Whereas if you're running outside zone, he is the perfect center 
to be able to cut off backside linebackers, to be able to get to safeties on deep outside zones. Like he is a quality, quality zone uh, center, in my opinion. Um, but I kind of have him in the back end of the first. I can definitely see him going in the first. Uh, if he goes in the second, I could see that too, based on the the transition that he'll have to make. But I think John did a great job of explaining like how smart this guy is. Yeah, I got to talk to him at the combine, and you can feel that. Like you can feel like this guy's very confident in himself. He he's played so much ball. He knows exactly what he's got to do to improve his game. And no shirt at the pro are, day. That was awesome. That's what I'm, I'm saying. totally in on that one. Man. I'm down on that. <laughs> and then when you when you get a guy who's so technically advanced, that translates to other positions, and it makes it easier to pick up the technique of playing center or guard. So I don't think it's going to be an issue. I actually have – this might be a little bit of controversial to take right now, uh -oh. but I kind of like Graham Barton over uh, Powers Johnson. Like when I look at Powers Johnson, I see Ooh. the power. That dude is uh, literally a stone wall when it comes to be – and dig guys out. but. I look for a very specific archetype, and this is the Brad cap, not the Kyle Shanahan cap. Um, if it were up to me, my whole offensive line would be hybrid Troy Fautanus. And so for me, Barton fits that as a center. Like, I look at him kind of like, what was the name of the, the guy that the um, – the Patriots took in the first round, Cole Strange, I think Cole it was, Cole. out of Chattanooga. I would say he's this he's way better off than than Cole Strange. And Cole Strange went, I think, 29, 29th overall. Um, I think the he's Niners, much better. I was one of the 49ers Trey Lance picks, by the way. Ended up with the Patriots oh. and Cole Strange. Yeah. Oh, interesting. That's yeah. a nice little parallel right there. Yeah. Um, but uh I, I like Graham. I like the technical aspect. I'm not afraid of the size and I like the fit at center. So um I kind of have him in that bottom first round range. So who's your guy then, Brad? Well, if I had to pick, I would say right here for me, it's that's a, how it's we all point. feel, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But it was it, a good point, John. It's like you're getting a second round guy. So, you know, and, and Cole Strange is actually a good comp because he's kind of what I explained with with Graham Barton is you you don't necessarily want to draft a guy who has to be everything you hope he is to be worthy of the first round pick. You want to draft him on day two, and then he performs like a first round pick and that's how you i feel the about value and the upside out of Pardon. it yeah yeah uh so Absolutely. who's your guy at 31 then so it'd be a coin flip between jordan morgan and uh kingsley suamataia right now but i i admittedly have done more work on jordan morgan so it it's a challenge because kingsley is can play both left and right and i think that will be a seamless transition Jordan Morgan has been predominantly a left, and I think he's done pretty damn well at left. I mean, when I put on the tape of him against uh, Latu coming out of UCLA, he he dominated him. And they also had Gabriel Murphy, who's projected to be third, fourth round defensive end as well. They had they weren't doing anything against Jordan Morgan. You could see now he's not super smooth in his pass set. You could see that there's some refinement needed in his base. But I would say he has the baseline traits that you want to tackle. His biggest knock is going to be arm length, but also in regards to how I've seen him handle that on tape, he does a pretty good job. He's got a mean chop. When you get those long arms with those defensive ends, he's just he's instantly chopping it. So that's one way to counteract shorter arms. I would say the the biggest thing that would that would come up is in the run game when you're trying to lock out a guy. Um, or they're trying to lock you out. Um, but outside of that, I think he can overcome the short arms. I would probably go Jordan Morgan right now just based on what I think he is and could continue to be. I would say Kingsley might have the higher upside, but I would say right now Jordan feels like he could be plug and play uh, at left tackle. We'll see if he can make that transition to right. As we all know, that is not an easy transition if you haven't done it before. Um, but I do like Jordan Morgan. I like what he's shown on tape. I think he shows baseline starting ability at 31. He would be a guy that I would be happier if the 49ers could trade back 
into the second, maybe gain a little bit more capital, try to get him in the early second, that way to get even more value with that pick. Because again, there's no guarantee he's going to start right away. There's no guarantee that flipping him to right is going to beat out Colton McKivitz, who understands this offense, understands exactly everything that's required. And you got a guy flipping sides and gets six padded practices before, hey, it's preseason week one. Good luck, pal. Um, so essentially, I would go Jordan Morgan right now at 31. But even questions still still remain at 31. See, and, and this is exactly what they're doing in the room, right? Yeah, like, yeah this 100%. Is like, ah, wood, yeah. Wood. They're going through these draft meetings right now. And, you know, that sort of analysis from Brad Graham is why he defeated Eric Crocker in the media bracket, <laughs> uh, I want to point out. And uh, <laughs> thank for showing up. I appreciate you, Croc. Like and subscribe. To, uh, to Shout out Croc, 49ers legend TV out here, man. Channel. Uh, there's only legend status Catching here. Catching strays out there show up in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I had a feeling you were going to select Jordan Morgan, Brad, you know, following your stuff and, and hearing you talk about these guys. And he's so much more plug and play. And he's another really versatile guy I can see playing a lot of positions. And, you know, the short, he's a, he was an odd watch for me because Morgan just was easy. But he he almost bored me, and I, I don't know if I'm like holding it too much against him. Whereas like nothing popped, and I was like, I, I want to see more pop from my first round offensive line pick, pick especially shorter arms, if he's going to move inside. And so I, I'm not convinced he can stick at tackle, which is why the other guy you mentioned, Suamataia, is my guy. And uh, and granted, he's he's boomer bust, but mm -hmm. based on the you know based on who the players I think will be. For sure there at pick 31, I think Sua Mataia will be there. Uh, I could see him going 31, 32. I could see him going to the Chiefs, you know, again, early second round. He's kind of that type of a prospect. He's he's for sure a top 50 guy. Does he get into the top 32 picks? I don't know. But because, he, because I'm convinced he can stick at tackle, even though he's got more work to do than Barton, he's got more work to do than, you know, everybody we've mentioned here. I, I, you know, he's got the arm length, he's got the size, he's got the athleticism. Apparently, he ran GPS tracked him at twenty one point five miles per hour, and I might have seen the rep that he did that on. I think it was a quarterback run Damn. at BYU. He is absolutely booking down the field. I was shocked seeing him run down the field. He was a five star recruit at Oregon, where his cousin went, Penny Sewell, uh, ended up mm -hmm. at BYU. Want to be closer to family, and he's he was a a redshirt sophomore coming out, so. Played his entire career, you know, 20 years old or younger. He just turned 21. He's going to be one of the younger players in the draft, but he still has starting experience for a full season at right tackle and left tackle. I think he sticks at tackle, but does have a fallback that he could play guard. He's got that big bubble butt that you want. He's a, He's got that powerful frame, big hands, long arms. He's just a pup. More development will be needed. He might not start week one, but I think his – his physicality and you know he does have experience and there's enough good tape that he could potentially beat out Colton McKivitz early in his rookie year and I think he would be potentially a guy who could be a starter long term at right tackle and even maybe even left tackle after a few years and by the way if you put his athletic testing side by side with his cousin Penny Sewell it's nearly identical and if and if it's not identical Suamataia has him by just a little bit height weight arm yes. length uh, his 40 time is a little bit better. They both put up 30 and 31 bench press reps. Like he's got that raw talent and tools and strength. So uh, I'm swinging for the fences on Suo Mata Ia. And he's kind of like my last option I like for the 49ers at 31. You know what I mean? It's like he's 31 out of 31 on my board. I, you know, you, you you hope that one of the other players maybe slips down that you like, whether it's an offensive lineman or someone, somebody else. But for the reason of the guy who I believe has the highest upside and can stick at tackle, even though he's got more work to do than some of the other prospects, is not a finished product at all. Uh, Chris Furster, do your work. Uh, Suamata E is my guy at three. Yeah, the funny thing is we're talking about, you know, Kingsley and Jordan Morgan. In my notes on Kingsley, I wrote exact opposite of Jordan Morgan when it comes to pa <laughs> patience and pass pro. Like yeah. Jordan Morgan, like you said, chill. He's just calm, cool. You'll come to me eventually. Yeah. I'll get you. It don't I'll matter. Learn. I'll and win Kingsley's every like rep. But always leaning and always punching. And so it's funny because you're getting kind of two opposites whenever it comes to pass pro, both highly effective. But, yeah, fun conversation.